Hey, princess. Go do your puppy business. What seems to be the problem here? Something came out of the water and took my dog, Princess! No kidding. Fourth time this week. Fourth? Yeah, I'll go and check it out. Okay. What we got here? Clue wraps. Yep. Oh. That's a fishy piece of evidence right there. There's definitely a scientific explanation for this. That monster had a big appetite. Was it big green and slimy? Yes, yes it was. What is it? What took my dog? No, nothing took it, ma'am, it ate it. Ate it? Like a popcorn shrimp, <laughs> all in one bite. Except he left you this, like a- Princess! Mm -hmm. well, we got here's an infestation of an unknown origin, I'm afraid. We'll have to do an immunoassay test to figure it out. An immuno what? It's a tough turn, but it'll help us locate the culprit. Sorry about your loss. <laughs> For over 50 years, immunoassays have been used by physicians, biologists, and forensic scientists to diagnose disease, detect contamination, and to determine the origin of biological samples found at crime scenes. Immunoassays rely on the uniqueness of antibodies. Antibodies are typically produced by the immune system in response to antigens, bacteria, viruses, pollen, or anything that your body perceives as foreign. Our bodies are capable of producing billions of different protective proteins called antibodies, each one specific to a different antigen. When an antibody and an antigen are a match, they bind together, similar to a lock and key. During an immunoassay, a sample containing one or more unknown antigens is exposed to several different known antibodies. If one of the known antibodies is specific to an antigen in the sample, they will bind together forming a visibly detectable clump known as an immunoprecipitant. Scientists are able to produce and purify antibodies, often from animals, that then can be used to test for many different things. And remember, you can do this in the comfort of your own classroom. Don't get too close to that water's edge, you'll be bad news if you do. Thank you. First, we'll need to gather our materials. Permanent marker, fine tip, 2% agar petri dish, straw, yellow food coloring, blue food coloring, petri dish template, PPE, set of simulated antibodies and antigens. Don't forget your creature slime. Obtain a petri plate with agar. Turn the plate upside down, keeping the lid on the plate, so that the agar is on top of the plate. Use a marker to make a template of figure one on the bottom of the petri dish. You will notice that the labels are reversed. Once you have completely labeled the bottom of your petri dish, turn it right side up. If you labeled it correctly using the template, the labels look right side up now. Remove the lid from the plate. Make wells over each of the circled labels on the plate. Use the droppers provided to add the reagents listed in the materials list to the corresponding wells. Place the plates in a cool place where they will not be disturbed. The agar plates will present results within a few hours. Are you kidding me? We don't have time for that! Once the samples are ready, record your results. So, what do you think happened to my little princess? Well, this proves without a doubt, in the most conclusive manner, that this was no creature to be meddled with. So, it's my suggestion that we hightail it out of here and never come back. Because that creature's only got one thing on its mind, and that's dinner. And I don't know about y'all, but I'm not gonna be said dinner. Got me? What? It's behind me, isn't it? So remember, check out ncbionetwork.org to learn more about how to be an expert in science like me!